wanted to get to this, guys. I saw it over the weekend. Uh, it was written by Carlos Menares in the Detroit Free Press. I saw that. And it, it did intrigue me a little bit. Um, Jared Goff, Brad Holmes appear to be creating a grievance culture within the Detroit Lions. You'll remember a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, a couple of months ago maybe even, when Brad Holmes came out at the end of the season and really kind of fired back at some of the reporters. It was like, yeah, Carlos was one of them. And Carlos tends to write things that are a little, um, that's, Slew negative Teetered a little bit. Line, yeah. He took over the... For, for the great Drew Sharp. <laughs> right. Of course he had to do that. Um, and look, uh, it's fine. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, but Brad Holmes took some shots at the Detroit media. Um, and then you have Jared Goff come in and say that the Detroit media, you know, on that podcast a week ago or a week and a half ago, uh, yeah. said that the Detroit media relishes in negativity. That was a big story for a couple of days. And... After reading this article, it kind of makes me think everybody has their own reality. Yeah. You know, like everybody looks at life through their own lens. Yeah, it's it's good. You, You know, and look, I would prefer, and who cares what I prefer? I would prefer. You do. Yeah, huh? You do. Yeah, I do. You care about what you. We all care about ourselves. I would prefer Brad Holmes and. Jared Goff, just not worry about one-offs that are written about him or one-offs that are said about him. That's fine. On the other hand, I'm like, well, I just watched that Michael Jordan uh, last dance who basically any little thing that was written or said about him, he used as fuel for his competitive fire. So, like, that part I get, too. Um But the way I see it through my own lens, I cannot remember a time that any Detroit sports team within a 12-month period was talked about as positively as the 2023-2024 Detroit Lions. No other team in the last 40 years in Detroit has been and gotten... So much positivity collectively. Are there one-offs? Sure. Are there questions? Sure. But, man, we're sitting up here, and I don't think it's just us. Most people don't even do draft stories here anymore because it's like, oh, whoever Brad Holmes takes, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. You know, we, we, we trust him. If he takes a wide receiver, okay. You must, <laughs> that's never happened in our lives. It's like Vern Lundquist, in your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So they see it how they see it. I see it how I see it. I don't think it's uh, even remotely close to the actual truth, their version of it, but it's fine. It doesn't rub me the wrong way. Again, I would prefer they just not, do that stuff, but it's fine. It doesn't bug me. I love the Vern Lundquist pull. Yeah. I, that, that, that was that was spot on. I like that. Um, you know what? Last week I said the same thing. I said, look, man, at the end of the day, I hope they got it off their chest so that they can be done talking with it. Brad Holmes, we get it. People said some things. People talked about your draft. It worked out for you. We're happy. Jared Goff, people said some things about you. Maybe you didn't like what they said about your boy, uh, Josh Reynolds. Please tell him to catch the ball. Those comments won't be made. But at the end of the day, I wanted them, hey, they got off their chest. The more you look about it, man, like, if you look at the team, and you bought the Silver ones, Ryan, like, they're a team of people, like, that didn't believe in them, whether it was Jared Goff leaving L.A., whether it was David Montgomery, you know, just the Bears not believing in him, whether it was people not believing in Dan Campbell. This locker room came together in 2021, and they listened to the the, the same old lines. Then they listened to the Quintricia, uh, Quintricia era ruined it. Then who's this guy, Dan Campbell? And then they got to the season. They were 0-10. Then they got the three thirteen and one. People talked a lot of stuff that next off season. Then the next season, they didn't start off too good. Fast forward, they've listened to a lot of negativity, and I think that negativity, whether it's Amon Ross and Brown, why are they drafting this guy? Who is this guy? What is he gonna be? I think that's how they operate. I think they're much like Michigan State. How long did Mike D'Antonio? I mean, Mark D'Antonio. How many times did he use the underdog card? Oh, Even God. when they became a really good ball club, 
or even when they were winning Rose Bowls. Michigan yep. wasn't even winning Rose Bowls when we were going. They were winning Rose Bowls, still playing the underdog card. It worked for them until it didn't. But with the Lions, I think it's just so many guys on that team where they've heard so much negativity from wherever they were before, from 2021 to now, where this is who they are. This is what they feed into. Maybe just not let us know as much that you're feeding into it. Maybe just tuck it. Maybe use it. But don't let us know you're listening to it. Hey, pride comes before the fall. Remember yeah, hey. That. hey, by the way, Mark Always D'Antonio, another perfect example yep. of when you're not winning what the expectation is when you come into the building. Yep. yep. This is how you carry yourself if you're a Michigan State Spartan player. Yep. This is what you do. This is how you act. This is how hard you practice. Even when you're not winning games. It's an expectation. If you're wondering why I refer to that, go back to the start of the show when I'm talking about Monty Williams. Absolutely. This is true. Now, just bringing this up, Dan Campbell, uh, calling out the media sometimes. Uh, uh, Brad Holmes, when he picked on the media after the season was over and said, hey, you guys told me, ah, running back, oh, this, that, hey, it worked, right? And now Jared Goff saying, hey, you know, these guys relish in the, in the, in the, what's the word I'm looking for again? Negativity. In the regular, in, in the negativity. Yeah, true. But this is Jared Goff coming over because he had something to play for. He said it. They sent me over there to die. That's, that's what Sean McVay did. They sent me over to that place <laughs> to die. And we all said that. In the middle of the night. Yep. When he got traded here, yeah. we're like, what a fall. This guy was the overall number one pick. We trade our all overall number one pick to get him. We get all those draft picks. So there's no expectation about this guy. I guess we just got to pay out his, his contract. But he took that, and it, and it burned a fire in him. And then you also got to look back before I cut you off. Look what happened just that first year. Yeah. We get Jared Goff, go 313 and one. Matt Stafford wins the Super Bowl. Yes. So to now even, even worse. more negativity. Absolutely. And he survived all of that to where he is now, winning two home playoff games here for Detroit for the first time in the Super Bowl era. And they get to the final, they get to the NFC East, they get to the NFC Championship game, they fall a little short. But this is what gets these guys. This is what makes them burn. So I ask you two right now, would you rather have it, Brad Holmes and Jared Goff throwing some shade at us, or would you rather have them just keep it quiet? Well, I feel like Dan Campbell, uh, you know, is the, hey, one love kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know Which what I mean? crazy. Like, Dan Campbell doesn't do that. No. You know? But he does defend himself on – Third on going on fourth down and stuff like Defending that. Defending yourself and going Talking after stuff, yeah. people right. are two different things. Just a couple from the chat here. Dr. Detroit says Hermani is sensitive for sure. GW the Kid says Hermani, you're a positive person. And even at some point, you even get bothered by all the clown stuff. Yeah, I do. But I'm not in charge of an NFL organization. It's true. You know, I'm not the quarterback of an NFL franchise that won two playoff games for the first time. In 30 years, first time in the history of their organization won two playoff games in one season in the in the Super Bowl era, that it's about to make 50 million bucks a year. Yeah, I, I'm sensitive. You know, <laughs> right. I got feelings. So do you think there is? I a got grievance? feelings. Do you I'm, think there's a grievance culture building on this team? I haven't heard any players besides Goff and besides uh, Brad Holmes say anything. No, let me tell you something. No, but. What I what just talking about this one particular article, I found it interesting. That's all. Okay. I found it interesting. It wasn't anything that you know you blow up or make into something that it's not, but it did make me think. How about that? You know, I, I read the article. It made me think. Let's face it. When you're picking 29th in the draft, even though the draft is right here, there's not a lot to talk about because. 28 players are going before you even pick. So we don't know what the hell is going to happen. You have no idea if Cooper DeGene is going to go 15th or he's going to go after you pick. Same thing for Kool-Aid McKinstry. You have no idea what's going to happen. So Carlos writes this column, and he, and he, puts, he, puts you, he got you to think. Me, I looked at it, and I'm like, eh. Trash. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing to read about. Yeah, I got, I got right. no feeling about it. Right. Me, I'm like... Uh, April 15th, yeah. what are we going to talk about today? But, yeah. you know, you're just, you're, you're looking, looking for stuff to I consider. Get it. I get it. I'm always looking. I, I always try to see both sides of something. Yeah. And then I'll make my opinion. Right. 
I try to look at it from the point of view of them. I try to look at it at a point of view from something else. And, you know, I fall short of being able to do that. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll eventually get to my own conclusion. But I will try to try. And, again, I fall short in many cases, Bray. Yeah. But um, I'll try to look at both sides and then form an opinion that way. Look, I understand it. Like, you know, I'm sitting up here like I didn't play, you know, for a team where the Jets, Mavs, you can talk about the Jets and oh, the yeah. disrespect that they received for years. And even when I got there, the first year we go to the playoffs, we backed into the playoffs. Like, we won the last game of the season, got into the playoffs. But the whole all, next off season, ah, oh, the Jets, they're not going to get back. It doesn't matter about what they do. They're just the same old type of team that's going to fall. It, and I saw that. A lot of negativity, a lot of negative comments from the New York Times and Post, et cetera, et cetera. But – we just like liked it. We relished in it. We didn't say anything. We we just knew what we were about. We got back to the AFC Championship, lost again, but we did get back. But we didn't need to say anything. I think that's more along the line where I'm at. It's like, all right, it's cool. You heard a lot of spit. You know, people spit a lot of spew at you, but just listen to it. Just keep not letting us know. I think these podcasts let you know too much. They give you the insides because, like we always say, you get comfortable. You sit up there. You say how you feel. Save that, man. The fans don't need to know because then you have these conversations whether right or wrong or whether just having fun, where we're talking about how you feel about blah, blah, blah. Keep, tuck some things under the vest. Can you imagine if Brad Holmes was the GM of the Giants or Jets? You want negativity, guys. Whew. Go live in the Big Apple. Go live in the metro New York, New Jersey area. There's double the teams. There's ten times the reporters and newspapers. And there's ten, a thousand times more negativity coming out of that city than here. This is like, when people ask me, Maz, what do you like better? you like Jersey or do you like living in, in Michigan? Because I got 31 years in both states. Do I love New Jersey? I grew up there. My heart's there. Of course, my family's there, except for my wife and children here. I love New Jersey. I love pizza. love all that kind of stuff. Yeah, love, you do. Oh, we know I love, you love pie. I love going to racetracks. We don't have racetracks here anymore. I had to go to Kentucky. You to and go Pete to a racetrack. had to go to Kentucky. But I love Michigan. You know why? Yeah. Because it's relaxed. People think there's traffic jams here. Nah. I laugh at the traffic jams <laughs> in Michigan. Even up on 96, even up on 75 past Great Lakes Crossing. That's nothing yeah. compared to everyday living in the New York, New Jersey, metropolitan Atlanta, area. You Atlanta, just LA, sit Chicago. in traffic. You might as well, instead of working eight hours a day, you're working up 10, 11 hours a day mm. with your trip. Incredible, Even man. if you live close. To the city, and I lived literally 15 minutes from New York City, but it never took 15 minutes to get there. And Maz, you bring up a great point, man. Obviously, I grew up here, grew up in Michigan, grew up in Detroit, then went and played in Cleveland. Cleveland's a similar city. Traffic is nothing. Nothing. It's not so I played for the 49ers. I was like, whoa, California. this is traffic, or Atlanta, or wow. LA, or even Seattle's traffic was bad. It was horrible. Like, you get some of these Chicago, lived out in Chicago, you get to these major cities, and you're like, you have a newfound appreciation. Oh, yeah. I sit on 275 for 40 minutes and just relax. Like, <laughs> listen to a couple songs, make some phone calls, because it's nothing. You get in these major cities, you're pissed by the time you get home. That's why people get home in the pit. That's why the divorces happen. <laughs>